Let's look at example 4 here, which is another good place to see where the random variable data exists, as well as uh, we can also realize the existence of uh, population data here in this example 4. But so, now, in this example, allow me not to write down the, uh, the, the, the wording description of the, of the example, but instead I'm going to draw a, an illustration. Now, so I'm sure that you have seen a, the TV show, The Wheel of Fortune. So here, of course, I'm, I am not going to make the complete wheel as, as in a TV show. But the idea of the Wheel of Fortune is that it's, it's a circle, it's a wheel. And it's being divided into equal areas on that wheel. The real wheel has a lot more areas, more, a lot more sectors than the one I'm drawing here. But uh, so here I can only have uh, eight sectors. So I'm going to give a numerical label, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And so, and there's a needle. So when you, you make a spin on that uh, wheel, and then let's see where that needle lands, wherever, which area, whichever area that your needle lands on, and then either you're going to win some outcome, some, some amount of money, or you're going to lose a certain amount of money. And so there's an area here that says uh, win nothing. And of course, uh, forgive me that I can't draw the, the, the perfectly divided areas, but these, each of these sectors are meant to be e an equal area on that uh, circle. And so here, this area here is a bankruptcy. Bankruptcy. Okay. And so, when you make that spin right here, if your needle lands into this particular label right here, then you are going to win $1,000. So it's a winning amount if, if the needle at the end of the spin lands into that particular label. If your needle, if that needle lands into either two or three, these two areas right here, these two labels right here, so when you land into any of those, then you are going to win. But of course, you got more chance of winning here, so our winning prize is only smaller. So how about $100? And if your needle lands into any of these three labeled areas, with four, five, or six, then we, we're still winning. But of course, again, expect a smaller number. So $10 is what we win if we land on, if our needle stops at any of these three labels. And so, the name for this particular sector is quite obvious. We win nothing, but hey, it's better than losing something. So if your needle lands right there, then we are winning zero dollars. And then if, your, if the needle lands here, then the real game is actually taking away all that amount you have earned. But how about in this game, let's set up a, simple, a simpler rule if the needle lands into that bankruptcy area, then we are going to take out a, a flat amount. So how about being 1,200? So here we're actually going to lose. We're going to lose 1,200. And so this is uh, a sort of like a, a game that's similar to the Wheel of Fortune. So now, okay, similar to The wheel of fortune. Okay, so how can we see random variable as well as population data being existed? Or how can we see random variable and, and population data exist in this uh, example over here? First of all, let me define a random variable with capital X. The random variable which I define here represents the the outcome as money amount. of 
each game. And so outcome I means anytime you make a spin, and so another rule over here, one spin, one spin equals uh, one game. So if you make a if you make two spins, you already play two games right here. And so at the end of each game, there's some outcome amount right here. So there's some money either you're gonna win win some amount or you're gonna lose some amount or you're not winning anything. But so generally the random variable x represents the outcome as money amount of each game right here. And how about for this game right here? Let's say it's free. So free to play. Okay. And even though even if it's not free, usually these games or let's say even if it's not free, the game can also be offered as at a very low price, a, a low fee on each uh, game to play, play right there. So it doesn't basically it, the, the idea of the game it doesn't cost too much to play. And then and then think about the winning prize right here. Once you play it, and you're gonna win thousand dollars or you're gonna win you know one hundred or ten dollars but maybe even if there's a fee to play like that and maybe it's just like a, a dollars or half a dollar or something like that and so so that's all the basic we need to know and so once we define our random variable to be the outcome as money amount right here and allow me to clear out all the side notes on, on my writing board here but so what I realize here, we can have a random variable because think about any one of us here who are entering that game right here. Think about if the first time we make a spin, we win, either we win something, if we win something right on the first game right here, mentally, do we want to quit the game? Well, we it's just the way how we are. We, we get greedy sometimes and we want to play more. And to, because first time win so easy, we want to play again to win some more. And so one run is not happy enough, you're going to make a second run. Even if the second run or on some run we lose, the game is free. So let's play again to make it up. And so and in that nature right there, the idea now is that we can make infinite number of runs here. We can make infinitely many runs. And so, no matter how many times you play the game, no matter how many times you play the game, but the values that, that you earn or lose only comes, only stays around these values right here. Either we are winning $1,000, that's a positive amount, or we are winning only $10. I should have said 100 or we going to win only $10. In the case that not as nice when we land into this area, it's a win nothing meaning $0. And in the case in the worst case of this game right here, if your needle land into this bankruptcy area, we're going to lose so versus these positive amount lose now we're going to indicate by a negative 1200. And so I pointed out earlier, we can make infinitely many runs right here. We can make infinitely many games. We can play infinitely many games. But no matter how many times you play the games, these are the only possible outcome amount that can turn out. And so the chance for winning $1,000 in the end is only a, a permanent, permanently the probability of one-eighth. The chance of winning $100 is permanently at probability 2 8 and the chance of winning $10 is permanent, permanently at probability 3 8 The chance of uh, making nothing is a 1 8 chance, and the chance of losing 1200 is a 1 8 So losing seems like a threatening amount right here but in the end the chance happening there is so small and 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 we have so many chances to win so let's see how the game turns out but see what we have here as we just realized what we have here is a random variable and since we can make infinitely many number of runs right here we have infinitely many 
times we can run into the 1,000, we can have infinitely many times we can run into $100 winning amount. So in the end, all of these outcome amount here can be regarded as our population data. So just make a note here that population data in this problem is just simply going to be all of the either winning or losing value. And we have a lot. So that's why what we have here is a probability distribution again. Distribution of uh, the random variable x that we defined previously. And so this right hand side column of my probability distribution, I'm listing out the, I'm listing out the different probabilities where x equals to different values on my left hand side uh, column. And so now after seeing clearly how the random variable exists as well as population data can be seen in this example over here, then the next question I would like to bring up right here, find right out of this example, right out of this game. So anytime you make a spin right here, let's find the expected value. So it's also a new terminology that deserves its own attention right here. Find the expected value of each game. And expected value of, I mean the expected amount value. All right, so now that the question of the, the example is being clearly being stated, we want to find the expected value. And, and I wrote that term in red ink right here, indicating it could be a, a, a good terminology uh, to, to and, and deserve its own attention. So here's the thing. Expected value, when we play any game, so here's what it means by expected value right here. Anytime you make a spin, anytime you make a game right here, you play a game, you can expect to win 1,000. That's because it, it's a possibility. So we can expect to win 1,000. But we, only, we can only expect that at the chance of a one-eighth chance. So what I'm doing here is that in, instead of getting a complete 1,000, the chance that uh, there's a chance that affects that. So the chance there multiplied with the, the, expect, with the value that we're expecting is going to eventually give us some, some other different values here. But then in addition to expecting 1,000, we can also expect $100 winning sometimes. And that, unfortunately, is at higher chance. But it's still winning. So $100 is another value to expect. And that expectation is actually at higher probability. So I'm going to go 100 multiply with 28. And also, and I need to also include, so these, so far I'm including with these different expectations. So another expectation to include here is that we can also win $10 sometimes. And the chance there is actually even higher, 3 out of 8. And so now I'm, start use, I'm starting to use that term. We're including more expectation, including more expectation. So at some, in some game, I am expecting to not make anything. So $0 outcome multiplied with the chance of being a 1 8. And in some game, I am expecting, in some game, I am expecting to lose as a negative amount, 1,200. And the chance there, the chance expecting to lose is a 1 8. So I'm including all of these different expectations here. And each of those expectations, ex expected value has a, a probability multiplied with that. And so the overall, in the long run, as I keep making infinite number of runs right here, in including all of these different expected values, then we come up to a final expected value right here. And so calculation. So here I call that expected value. My random variable here is x. Expected value has a symbol, capital letter E, and parentheses around the x right here is indicating here's my expected value, expected value of the curtain random variable x right here. So calculation turns out to be three point seventy five. And it's actually 
when it when we're doing expected value, it's also good that we're indicating the sign here. So it's a positive three point seventy five. And so my final expected value for this particular example, and I was uh, trying to uh, do the similar thing with that uh, Wheel of Fortune game. And so in my game here, it turns out that I have an expected value being a positive, indicated by a plus sign here, it's a positive 3.75. What does this expected value do for us, especially uh, when we are playing this game right here? What's the expected value helping us to understand? It's helping us to understand that as an interpretation, Anytime you're playing a game, anytime you're playing a game, you are expected to win to earn three dollars and seventy-five. And I'm using the term win right here, but simply because the expected value turns out being a positive three point seventy-five. So yes, I'm not saying individually on any individually at this game you lose, but I'm, I'm not talking about only on one game. I'm talking about as we doing all games and we, we keep spending our time sitting there days and hours and keep replaying, keep replaying and we, in the end remember the game is free to play or at a very low fee like that. And so anytime you make a game then you're expected to win $3.75, $3.75. So, so some other games similar like this, is there's, a, there's a value that, that coming out and there's a probability on each outcome on each value coming out, then if your expected value is a negative, then a game like that, don't play it. Because uh, no matter what, maybe you win here, maybe you went there, but in the end, the long run, you're still going to lose because, because uh, in the long run, it's a negative. If it happens, it's a negative expected value, meaning you're going to lose uh, that amount. And so, but if we're looking a little more closely into this, the way how I, I'm explaining, and especially if we're looking at the way how we did the calculation here, then it turns out that treating x as the random variable, then the expected value of x seems like what we were doing is the mean value of this random variable. And so yes, it is true. The expected value truly is just the average. So on any one game, you can expect 1,000, but only as a small chance, you can expect one hundred dollars at a slightly higher chance you can expect to win ten dollars at a three eight chance and you expect to run into other outcomes as well but expected value here in, in our in, in fi our final expected value we're talking about averaging out all of these different different individual expected values so in the end our overall expected value here is a is a meal over here or just the average of all these values the mean value of all these are different outcomes Right there. And so expected value now is, is another way to understand about the population mean value of a random variable.